This is a 1962 Corvette, 327 cubic inches, 340 horsepower. I bought this car because when I was much, much younger, I watched Route 66, where there were two guys that drove around the country in 61, 62, and 63 Corvettes, and I wanted to be just like them. Uh, you are now. <laughs> So this is a 1962 Jaguar XKE. It's a six-cylinder dual overhead cam engine. I think it's the sexiest car ever made. And pretty much everyone agrees with that. So of course, it fits with my personality. <laughs> So this is a 1947 Cadillac Series 62 convertible. It's my wife's car, and it has a 150 horsepower flathead engine. Some interesting other stuff about it is the seats, the windows, and the convertible top move up and down by using hydraulic rams, not motors. Um, we just brought this car back from New Zealand where we drove it around for three or four weeks with a bunch of other types of car members. So you shipped it over there to drive it and then shipped it back? Yep. That is awesome. So this is a 1936 Packard 1404 Coupe Roadster. It's 140, 150 horsepower, straight eight. The motto of Packard was, ask the man who owns one. And you can see the license plate. I own one. <laughs> this car is interesting because the first owner was Gene Harlow, who was a movie star in the 30s who died quite young and she was Howard Hughes' girlfriend. So Howard Hughes and Jean Harlow both sat on these seats. That's an amazing story. The foot ornament, or mascot, is the goddess of speed. I couldn't help but get a close-up of it. It's beautiful. So this is a 1948 Chrysler Town & Country. It's a 130 horsepower straight eight motor. 
And the car's interesting because the wood is structural. It looks like the wood is bolted onto the steel in the back, at the back fenders, but actually the entire car is wood from the windshield back. And the steel fenders are actually bolted onto the wood. Um, I just had this car varnished. You don't usually varnish your cars these days. <laughs> I couldn't find anyone who knew how to varnish a car. But I did find a lady, find a lady who knew how, knew how to varnish boats, and so she varnished the car. Nice. So this is a 1949 MG TC. It's a four-cylinder overhead valve British car. Um, and it boasts a full 40 horsepower. I bought this car for my wife's 50th birthday 20 years ago because it was made in the same month that she was born. Oh. This car is a lot of fun to drive especially when you're speeding along with the full 40 horsepower. <laughs> but you have to be really skinny to get in it. So you, you carry some spare spark plugs with it? <laughs> That's just to show off. Oh. <laughs> Reproduction <laughs> gas gauge. <laughs> Take it out. And look, that's how much gas you have. <laughs> well, your little, your little light's going to come on. <laughs> well, I want to drain it. Get it below the oh, big, oh. yeah, you got a little leak there. John's a bus guy. This used to be his 4106 that he used to have. He's got a few other. Really cool cars that he used to have. And I don't know if you noticed the. Told me he was my kind of guy. Nice Greyhound sign on the wall. Okay. So this is a 1956 Thunderbird. Like all of our cars, it's been body off restored, which means they take the body off the frame and they rebuild the engine and the entire drivetrain and then they put the body back on the frame after they've painted it and fixed all the things that are wrong with it. So this car is interesting for 1956. By the way, it's the only Thunderbird that has the tire on the back. The 55 and the 57, which looks like it, have the tire in the trunk. Um, it's fully equipped. It's got power steering, power brakes, and well, you couldn't get air conditioning from your from the factory. Ford provided an air conditioning kit that the dealer could install. So it's a, rare to find a 1956 car that's air conditioned. 